Okay, why does completing the square work? We've run through several examples. I say that x squared plus 10x is the first part of x plus 5 quantity squared. I say this because x plus 5 quantity squared, and you should square that before you read this, but uh, hopefully you did that, is x squared plus 10x plus 25. Of course, you probably could have figured that out in your head if you're at this stage, but just to be sure, you should write it out. Now, what's the, what do I mean by the first part? Well, I'm talking about the first two terms, the x squared and the x terms. This is the first part of this expression here, and that comes from x plus 5 squared. Okay, so the x squared plus 10x matches the first two terms of x plus 5 quantity squared. Okay, well, can you use the same logic without looking ahead and tell me what x squared minus 14x is the so-called first part of? Well, you know that, uh, and, and hopefully you've done this, uh, why did this give you the first part of this? Because 5 is half of 10, and when you square this, the coefficient of x is going to be double the number you put here, double the 5, and that's going to give you the 10x. So since you end up doubling this term to get the coefficient of x here, if you want to express uh, this as the first two terms of a perfect square, you're going to have to be doing x plus half of this squared. Okay, well, same thing here then, x squared minus 14x. If you square x minus 7, then the x term is going to be minus 14. And again, if you don't completely see that, you need to do some more squaring. You need to do some more multiplication of binomials uh, by the distributive law. You need to really be sure that you understand that. You have to have that part mastered before you can fully understand this. But having mastered that, this is really pretty easy to understand, and the pattern becomes very clear. What do we do with x squared plus 18x? Well, we take half of 18, we get 9 x plus 9 quantity squared is going to give us x squared plus 18x. And then it's going to also give us plus 81, just like we got the plus 49 here and the plus 25 here. Okay, what happens if we do that to x squared plus bx? Well, if we follow the pattern, we're going to do x plus b over 2 quantity squared. And I've written this out using the distributive law x times x is x squared, x times b over 2 is b over 2 times x, commutative law, b over 2 times x is b over 2 times x, and b over 2 times b over 2 is b squared over 4, so that when we square x plus b over 2, we do get x squared plus bx matching what we have here, but then plus b squared over 4. Okay, well, what good is this? Um, eventually, we're going to use it to solve a quadratic equation, which we do up here. But first, let's just make the connection, the essential connection. From what we have here, we just turn this equation around, and x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals quantity x plus 5 squared. So what's the big deal? Well, we put the parentheses around x plus 10x just to indicate that we're going to solve for that. We subtract 25 from both sides, and we see that x squared plus 10x is the quantity x plus 5 squared minus 25. Okay, doing the same thing here. And don't look ahead. Just pause to see what you get. But we can rearrange this just to say that x squared minus 14x plus 49 is x minus 7 quantity squared. Subtracting the 49 from both sides, we see that our original expression, x squared minus 14x, can be replaced by x minus 7 quantity squared minus 49. So we can always replace an x squared term plus an x term if we have just coefficient 1 in front of the x squared term. And see other videos to see what we do if we don't have a 1 in front of x squared, but that's pretty easy to deal with. Okay, so we can always replace an expression of this form with an expression of this form. For x squared plus 18x, the specific expression is what? Well, half of 18 is 9. x plus 9 squared is going to give us x squared plus 18x plus 81. So x squared plus 18x is equal to x plus 9 quantity squared minus 81. 
with a little practice, we can learn to see that rather easily. And in general, x squared plus bx could be replaced by x plus b over 2 quantity squared minus b squared over 4. And we can see that easily from over here. Uh, so that, well, and here's, here's the reason, since all this, and you can read this. If you understand the pattern of what we did here, you should understand the pattern of what we did here, uh, which is just basically to set this equal to this, and then subtract b squared over 4 from both sides. What good is this? Well, say we want to solve x squared minus 14x plus 6 equals 0. Now we can, of course, use the quadratic formula. Um, so we probably wouldn't do this a whole lot except as an exercise. There are other cases where you really do want to do it, but we don't want to talk about that just yet. But just to see how that would work here, we replace x minus 7 quantity squared, uh, sorry, x squared minus 14x with x minus 7 quantity squared minus 49. And that's x, not x squared. Okay, I did that a couple of places, and I kind of missed it here. Okay. So that's x minus 7 quantity squared minus 49. And then we have our plus 6. Well, that rearranges very easily to x minus 7 quantity squared equals 43. So that x minus 7 will be plus or minus the square root of 43. And x is 7 plus or minus the square root of 43.